Welcome to Taste Buds. I'm Deborah Eckerling, goal strategist, writer, and foodie. And today I'm speaking with Inbal Baum, the founder of Delicious Israel, Delicious Cities, and other hospitality initiatives. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to, to be here. So you're like the queen of delicious. <laughs> so what is delicious everything? And how did it come about? I, my, um, one of my favorite things is when some of my vendors in Israel, when I'm, um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you about the delicious, uh, world, but when they, when I call them and they're like, delicious, hello. Cause that's how they have me saved in their phone. So it's pretty, it's a pretty sweet name to, <laughs> to have as a side. Um, so delicious, the delicious world, uh, started about actually, this is going to be our, um, our bar, bar mitzvah year, our 13th year. Uh, we started 13 years ago uh, it, when I was living in Israel. I founded uh, the food tourism business, which is now Israel's uh, premier food tourism business called Delicious Israel. Um, and at the time, it was an absolute passion project. I was a lawyer in another life. I did. I was a yoga instructor, um, did a bunch of other things, lived in a bunch of other places. And when I moved to Israel, I made Aliyah and I was like, you know, what do I love? And for me, it was talking about food as you are very, you know, as we share absolutely, uh, and anyone listening to this, surely um, being around food, being out with people. And I think as a former lawyer, I just wanted to really be in this win, win, win situation where I was really feeding and thriving the people around me and myself and the and the community. So, um, so it really was a passion project where I was able to show off my Israel to people coming. And 13 years ago, people were not talking about Israeli food the way that they are today, and they don't have the familiarity with the things that we can say like shakshuka and the spice that like everybody knows today. So, um, so it was a great passion project turned into a business turned into a successful business and, um, and during the pandemic, um, not so successful business, unfortunately. So we pivoted, uh, pivoted, uh, the formal word you use during the, everyone did in the pandemic, um, to, um, a corporate virtual event events business called delicious experiences, um, which is still going great, not related to Israel necessarily, but just, um, for, for companies to do team building and, um, prospect events. And then, um, and then October 7th happened. And after years of you know, kind of having a year and a bit rebuilding from the pandemic in Israel and everything was going amazingly, finally, we all know the tragedies that, that took place and, and continue to be really um, traumatic for, for so many people and for the tourism industry in Israel. So, um, so after that, my instinctual, the, the passion part of me said, I love talking about Israeli food. I'm not going to start. I love sharing it with people. Can't do it in Israel right now. How, what are some other ways we can do it? And the thing that's been kind of on my roadmap for years and just didn't really get to was Israeli food tours elsewhere. So um, we launched our first food tour outside of Israel, of Israeli food in New York in December of 2023. Uh, and that's going strong. We have a second tour out now in Williamsburg. We have a third and fourth tour in Miami and more on the way in London and then some other food tours, just fun, not Israeli food tours in other places uh, like Park City, where I live now. And um, so that's the delicious empire. <laughs> okay, well, Utah, Park City, Utah and Jewish food. Usually you do not hear that city and that phrase. No, there is there is not a lot of Israeli food here. I will tell you, um, there is some. Not a, not not in, exactly. Now that I'm cooking here in my house, we've now doubled. We've exponentially uh, enhanced the food scene. Um, no, I'm here for different reasons. But during the pandemic, um, my husband and my two kids and I were in our tiny Tel Aviv apartment, and we were like, "This is. We need to get some air <laughs> out." Uh, and my brother lives here, so we came to visit for two months, and we were working on delicious experiences on the corporate virtual events business. So we kind of landed here, and my husband, who's Israeli and loves to snowboard, was like, "Can we stay for one season?" And I was was like I'll give you one like we're here for one year we're going back next year um and life you know life happens and um 
and we kind of, you know, my, my daughter who's now seven is like, yeah, we live in Israel. We're just here because <laughs> she uses my language because I still want to be in Israel. And so, um, so we're still here and, and we've had three ski seasons, which have been great. And, uh, and for me getting to now travel and do delicious cities and develop new cities and develop new food tours um, has really fed me in a way that I, I actually couldn't have done in Israel. And so it's kind of this, again, coming back to this win, 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 because my team in Israel is still theoretically thriving if we had tours, but I still have a, a, a team of wonderful guides who are passionate and can share the same love and, and enthusiasm that, that I started with 13 years ago. Um, and now we're getting to expand that all over. Like just uh, last night, uh, two nights ago, we had a wonderful tour with a synagogue group and like everyone's still schwitzing and has the good feeling. And I think an important part of what everyone is experiencing now is the desire for um, what I'm calling this, the togetherness that I think that food we all know does of bringing us together and being able to support Israeli businesses in a time when this is when we should be supporting Israeli businesses. As you know, the subtitle of the show is bite-sized conversations about food, cooking, and community. So delicious is like all the above. Okay, two-part question. Why do people love Israeli food more now than ever? And what is the community connection? So I think that people love is I, I think it's been a few years coming on the why do people Israeli love why do people love Israeli food? Um, my theory kind of has been that the way that we eat, and I think that especially the social media eruption and taking pictures of your food, people don't want and don't have the bandwidth to sit at French restaurants with white tablecloths and three course meals that take hours and hours and hours. They want healthy. They want relatively quick. They're, they're willing to put time into an experience, but it shouldn't be a, you know, an ongoing, never ending, when is dessert going to come kind of experience. And they want it to be um, local like produce based and um, feeling of, you know, eating local, eating sustainable and delicious, right? So I think that Israeli food actually captures a lot of that. It's diverse, right? It's like, what is Israeli food? We could name literally a hundred things that fit into that category. It's, um, there's so much quick and easy aspect of it. So even again, I'm not talking about fast food, although fast food is also like, would I way rather have a sabich than I would a, you know, Burger King hamburger? Absolutely. And, um, but, but quick in the sense of it feels like a quicker clip. Like even when you sit in a restaurant in, in Israel or you, or you're eating Israeli food, it's like, you don't have to say, oh, bring whatever comes first. Like, that's just how you eat because it's family style, it's togetherness around the table. So, so I think the style, the natural way of Israeli food fits better into how people want to eat today anyway. So um, that's kind of like a philosophical or maybe like a, a academic kind of answer. But I would also say if you look at an Israeli uh, restaurant menu, it's like just so many so diverse and so many good things and and you've got vegan and you've got gluten-free and you've got healthy and you've got um indulgent and you've you've got the full range so it, it's not like you're kind of in any one box like if you went to a, another certain type of cuisine which is like very particular and specific so so that's my that's my kind of um academic approach on on why israeli cuisine now and also like it's um it's it's um sexy and spicy you know like it's got so much flavor and i think people want that like kind of brain plug you know like it's it's like they want that like quick fix i don't know and the food and the food and the drinks are able to do that um just just because of of uh you know where they came from and and mostly i'm talking about sephardic and mizrahi food here not necessarily the ashkenazi stuff but but that's another conversation so um so that's the why and then the second question about community um what was the second question well it, it, i think you kind of answered it too though when talking about the food because it's family style i asked how the the interest in the food and how community goes hand in hand yeah and i see that i mean the family style the sitting together 
um, when I go to a restaurant, um, you know, if, if you're going to a, I don't know, an Italian restaurant, or maybe Italian's a bit different because it's, it's family style, but a lot of restaurants in, uh, around the world, it's like you order your dish. In Israel, you don't necessarily order your dish, right? You order for the table <laughs> and you're eating together. And what I love around food tours is we do have the things that you eat because they're yours and it's your thing, but it's very much about sharing and very much about that com commun communality, the, you know, the communal aspect of it. And, um, and I think it's also funny. I think about like sitting in a cafe in Israel and you order something and the waitress will be like, no, 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 don't order that. Like, look at that guys, you know, and you're like, he's pointing at the table next to you. And she's like, take that. It's so it's a special today. It's so much better. <laughs> thanks for telling me what to eat, you know, but you, but then you get that and you love it. And, and then you have a conversation with that person at the table next to you. Cause they're like, it's so good. You definitely take this. So, um, there's, there's an aspect of, um, openness and, um, willingness and directness that goes into the food that I think also goes into the, the community feel and allows people to, to feel togetherness with that. I love that. And I just had this flashback to whenever you go to a restaurant, I think anywhere, it's fun to watch the body language of the wait staff because you can order something and then they just, I'm sure body language specialists would have a field day, but you can tell if you order something and they just kind of write it down like, oh, okay. Or if they write something, you order something else, they're like, great choice. So they know. So mm -hmm. I love how you're talking about in cafes, you don't even have to guess. They will tell you, right, what you will love even more than you thought you wanted to eat. Totally. They, they know better than you. Which it, is fine. So which is where, great. Where did all this love of food come from? Mm, good question. This also kind of goes, this goes deep. Um, my, my history is that I, I grew up in America, but uh, to Israeli parents. And so we would always go to Israel. That was our vacation um, to visit our family. And when we would go, this is of course pre-cell phone days and a million years ago, back in the in the dinosaur ages. And we and and all of a sudden I have this family that I don't have most of the year, and I have this attention, you know, and all the love. And what do you do when you visit family in Israel? And anyone who's been to Israel to visit family knows you eat. You go from one meal to the next. And if you're not talking about the next meal and the first meal, something's funky. You know, you're, you're like already planning your dinner at your breakfast. And um, and that to me was Israel. It was the food and the joy of food together and the sharing of food together. And whether it was something like totally, I, I recently one of on one of our, our tours in New York, one of the chefs does a high end version of this dessert called Milky which is a, something I remember as a kid that my grandfather would stock the fridge with. And Milky's basically a pudding, a chocolate pudding. Um, today they have all kinds of flavors, but what I, the core, you know, the, the OG is, was a chocolate pudding with like whipped cream on top. And I would have this for breakfast because I was on vacation and my parents like wouldn't say anything because my grandfather stocked the fridge with this like breakfast. It was not a breakfast. It was very much a, like a dessert. But but I was allowed to eat it. And so I just, you know, it was like this joy around food and around pleasure and like and then going to eat um, with all these foods and, and growing up in America, you don't have shawarma, you don't have falafel, you don't have or you don't have them in the in the same way where you're like sitting out on the street, like dripping everything, you know, and it's like delicious and everything is is uh, fresh. So um, so to me that like it, it really started young and um, and then it just stuck with me. So nature, nurture, I'm not sure which was first, but I always was just very excited about it. And even from a young age, I was involved in Jewish youth group and like food was always the place where people could really have a lot of joy together. And there was a lot of also, um, you know, it also, a lot of people have a lot of things around food. So there's a lot of depth there. There's a lot of question marks there. There's a lot of, and I see this, you know, through the food tours, there's a lot of meaning in every direction around food, positive, negative memories, good, bad, everything. So, um, so that was also interesting as like a psychological thing for me to watch and to study. And you, you mentioned like checking the body, like, you know, seeing the body language of, 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 um, of the wait staff. For me, it's the people it's like watching, it's like seeing people in their interactions around food and, 
and I love that. I remember, I mean, just one of the joys I get about doing food tours is seeing families create those memories that I had and seeing like this really picky kid, which I was not, but this, you know, picky kid try Malabi or try something that they're is so out of the range and their parents. And I love this. The parents are like, Oh, they're not going to try anything. They're not going to eat anything. But when that, when those children get exposed to it in this different way and in this different environment and um, with this kind of different openness, they, they're willing and they try it and sometimes they even like it. And so it's a beautiful thing to see. Cause I know that that's what I, that's, I can see that reflection of my past also. Um, so yeah, it was just always uh, a part of me. And I, I lived in places that were very much food places. I lived in, uh, in Berkeley in California and in New York and um, some other places around the world that were like food, like food was central. So, so it's just always been a part of me. So nature, nurture, your upbringing. So basically everything. Yeah. I would love for you to share a recipe. So, cause you're talking about all these wonderful food experiences. What is a recipe that you love that you want to share? Yeah. So, um, so there's a recipe that pops to mind because it's so ubiquitous of like the street corners in Israel, but also can be done at so many levels. And it's called Malabi, M-A-L-A-B-I. And the origin of it is really deep. It's, it goes back to the Ottoman period. Um, some say the Turkish Jewish immigrants that came to Israel brought it with them, but it became very much a part of um, every sort of level of type of eating in Israel. So you can go to a street corner and get like a really kind of um, not so good quality version of it. Or you can go to, um, there's places now that are called, uh, 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 it's a Malabia, the place that sells the Malabi, that, um, that you know, it's, that's the only thing they sell. And we go to those on, on our tours because it's, it's such a good part of society. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll tell you in one second what it is. And then there's like the high, high end restaurants that are now doing really exquisite, fine plating deconstructed versions with a dot and a and a frozen pomegranate you know foam or whatever like a beautiful um upgrades i guess you could say on it so the basic version and and what i love about it it's flexible it's a flexible recipe that you you kind of can't mess up you can kind of mess up but like not really so um what it is it's coconut cream or milk right you go either vegan and parv or dairy and um, and you uh, cook it in a pot with basically sugar cornstarch, and that's what gives it the thickness, like a pudding, like, um, and uh, and either orange blossom water, which I love, or rose rose water, which I don't love so much. So uh, the classic one is rose water. I like orange blossom water. So you cook it; it's got this beautiful aroma, and then you let it cool. You put it into little ramekins or bowls. You let it cool, and then you top it with a syrup. Now, what's cool about it is you can go crazy. The classic syrup is going to be usually some kind of pomegranate. It's like red, like the like very red. So it can be um, made from pure pomegranate or or some some pomegranate juice, but you thicken it so it becomes a syrup and then you put that on top and then you dress it with either pistachios or peanuts and coconut. And if you really want to go crazy, you put chocolate and all kinds of other fun things on it. So it's we do uh, sometimes um, when we do cooking workshops, a make your own Malabi bar. So you can really like make your own toppings. Um, so, so uh, I, I love the recipe because it's flexible. You can make it creamier. You can make it thicker. You can really, if it's seasonal, you can do apricot dressing. You can do um, mango dressing on it, like for the syrup, for the sauce on top. So you can really play with it. The, the, the bottom is like a blanc mange in France, and it's like a, a blank page. You know, you can really put whatever you want on top to make it shine. I love it. So it's a recipe you can dress up or dress down and make as complicated or as simple as you want. It, it's like ice cream, right? You, you've got, or I was going to say, it's like ice cream or tacos or really <laughs> any kind of food that you could pile on the different flavors. So exactly. before we wrap, do you have any final food for thought that you want to share as regards to cooking or exploring new foods or really anything? No, I'm just really excited for, um, you know, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I mean, I love, I love, 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 love talking about food. So it's, it's been a joy. And, and I think also right now, especially with what's going on in the world, being able to 
continue to talk about Israeli food. And I, I think everyone needs the thing that fills them and that drives them. And for me, being able to talk about Israeli food and share my love and um, hopefully bring that into people is um, is kind of what lights my day in, in these tough times. So thank you for allowing me that opportunity. And, and I hope that other people uh, who are listening will check out our tours so that they'll get that opportunity to share and to, to have that win-win where their guide is passionate about sharing and the vendors are, are happy to have the support. Um, so I, I just appreciate everyone's support around that. Wonderful. And where can people learn more about you in Delicious Everything? Yeah. I just renamed so your company. I the Delicious that. Everything. I'm totally buying that. It's like the you know, everything bagel space. Um, so Delicious Israel on Instagram. Delicious Cities is our newest one on Instagram. Delicious Experiences. Uh, and those are all the websites as well. So deliciousisrael.com, deliciouscities.com, and deliciousexperiences.com. And you mentioned the everything bagel. What is your perfect bagel? The everything bagel. I recently, when I was in New York, I was having the everything wheat bagel with, um, ooh, ooh, I had the best bite. <laughs> it was amazing. Horse radish cream cheese wasabi tobiko and um and uh white fish salad Woo! life-changing <laughs> well you certainly like your flavors and definitely love those spices and then the sweet so you're not going to play favorites you like all flavors it, give it to me all like like i love um yogurt pretzels because they're soft and they're salty and they're savory and they're hard and that's everything like give me some spice on that and we're done it's like best food ever i do i like to put it all together the, the delicious everything, right? <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Imbal, for joining me today. Thank you for tuning in to Taste Buzz with Deb. Don't miss an episode. You can subscribe on YouTube and or your favorite podcast platform. And you can go to jewishjournal.com slash podcast to read the articles that go with the interviews and get delicious ha, recipes. You can also learn more at tastebudswithdeb.com. So go explore and put all the flavors together because why wouldn't you enjoy things that are delicious? Until next time, bon appetit.